Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habita fillah from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an important qa'idah and that is the qa'idah of akhuwata islamiyya the islamic brotherhood and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in akramakum in the lahi atqaqum that verily the most revered to Allah or the one who has the the higher status is the one who has taqwa and taqwa as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also pointed he said ataqwa ha huna and he pointed to his heart his chest uh, letting us know that the taqwa, taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, this is a act of ibadah, qalbiyah. It's from, it's an action of the heart, and we, uh, uh, as far as its asl, its origin. And as we mentioned, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "In the Allah la yandru ila adsadikum, wala ila surakum, walakin." Uh, Muslim. The Prophet والسلام, said that verily Allah does not look to your shape or your body, you know, and all of those physical characteristics or even what you possess. But rather, he looks to your heart and your deeds. And so, also the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, or Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, إِنَّمَا mu'minun ikhwa. Verily, the believers are brothers. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الْمُسْلِمَ أَخُ الْمُسْلِمُ يُشَدُّهُ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا That the Muslim is the brother to the Muslim believer. They strengthen one another. All of this I, I say because we should have no misconceptions about the importance of being brothers in Islam. And that means even though we have different cultures and we're from different races and we're from different tribes and we're from different localities, that that is not a man. That is not something that prohibits that brotherhood. That brotherhood should be based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and adherence to the madhab of the salaf al salih. And I wanted to share just a couple of points from my limited experience in this dunya. And things that we've witnessed with regards to these issues of racism. And why it needs to be stepped out. Because I want you to get a glimpse for those who ha were born into Muslim families and, and, and have Muslim uh, backgrounds as far as from uh, co countries that were Muslim states or are Muslim states or whatever the case may be. To give you an idea of what it's like to be a person who had a life outside of the fold of Islam, prior to Islam, and their family is not Muslim, and their friends and old companions, they're not Muslim, their environment was never Muslim. In fact, many have never even come in contact, especially prior generations with Muslims, really. And had no concept of Islam. To leave every single thing from that which you love and that which you are surrounded with to come to the religion of Islam. That's, that's deep right there, if you can imagine that. Then to come to the religion of Islam and read in the books 
reading Bukhari and Muslim, reading the Quran, and seeing that we're brothers. When I became Muslim, it was in a very mixed community, predominantly Cham. The people were uh, a kingdom in Cambodia, and also mixed. Some uh, white brother reverts, uh, many African Americans, um, and you know a pretty good mix from from West Africa. Some brothers, probably some Somalis at that time as well, and uh, some Arabs, and just a, a mix Indonesians. But the community that was closer to the to my parents' house where I lived at the time was predominantly Pakistani, Pakistani and Indian. And they loved me, and they trusted me with the key to the masjid when there was no masjid, when it was just an apartment. And then they moved, they got a lot of money, and more people came. They built a, you know, they got a really nice masjid and so forth. But, and I looked at this, because I never came from a background, I didn't come from a background where we, had issues of real racism as far as my parents and my family, pretty open family, also mixed. You know, we have white in my family, we have this, we have this. Hispanic roots, we've got all kind of roots up in there. So it was never an issue for me to be in a mixed community. And in fact, I love to be around, you know, Ethiopians, the Somali, every, everyone. And, but, what I experienced with some of the communities and some of our brothers is you experience that exclusion, that the brotherhood was very limited. Don't cross such and such line, don't cross such and such barrier. So you can see how that can be a problem for those people who left everything to a new life, a new system of brotherhood that we're told about issues of Allah wal bara you must love and you hate for the sake of Allah and you must do this and you must believe this and then we find the people are shortcomings in their practice but yet they expect us to do everything and they don't want to include us so this is where you find hurt and for some people they leave Islam for this reason so I just wanted to highlight this because we've known people who have embraced Islam from various backgrounds, going into communities, they don't see anyone who looks like them, anyone who understands them, and they just want to come closer to Allah. But the people push them away because of the way they look. Not necessarily because of their race specifically, in some cases, but because they don't understand them. They don't understand this guy being all tatted up, or this guy having an earring or whatever, or dreadlocks. They don't know how to deal with that. When I was a Muslim, a new Muslim, I had dreads. My dreads was, um, was here. They used to lay on my shoulders. I was proud of that. My lion's mane, I loved it. Okay? And no one could tell me to leave that. But it was when my iman became stronger, and my knowledge became a little bit, uh, was increased, then I made that decision. The point being, a habitafillah, is that we have to break these barriers down. Because those barriers not only hurt those people coming to Islam, whether they're white, black, whatever their nationality is, but they hurt also those communities because you can't stay insular and you can't live in a country and hate everyone around you. That doesn't work. There will be a backlash from the community. There will be a backlash from the people, which has happened. You know, you have communities of Arabs and pockets and, and so forth, and really of all the migrant communities, and a lot of times they are in certain communities and they take an exploitive position instead of sharing Islam and, and, and reaching out to the people and showing the people the da'wah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Instead, they just are insular and they also, it, it becomes hostile a lot of times. And this is a big mistake on the Muslims' part. So it's imperative that we begin to address these issues of racism and exclusion and exclusionary practices and not understanding. I think this is the biggest part that is a big problem because we don't have people generally beating each other up amongst the Muslims 
in the West uh, for their race necessarily. There's perhaps, there are incidences and there's gangs in the Muslim youth, we know this, but when we have the prejudice and we maintain those stereotypes. That doesn't mean you have to marry your daughter to this one and, and your, your son should marry from this race. No, we're not saying that anyone has to be forced to do anything. But you should understand your brothers, strive to understand your brothers. As, as a revert, we have to try to understand our brothers from their various communities, the Somalis and the various tribes amongst the Somalis and their divisions. We have to try to understand that because we mix with them. The Ethiopians, there's Oromo, this one's Tigre, this one's uh, Am Amharic, what have you. We have to try to understand them as our brothers. Likewise, this one is Cham, this one is Vietnamese, this one is, you know, he's Pakistani, he's Indian. He's from Kashmir, he's from, okay, the most pious of you is those who fear Allah the most. And when you find that Islamic brotherhood, it tastes so beautiful and delicious. When you can have ta'awun with your brother, who's from a totally different background. He's from Palestine or Philistine. This one is from some of my closest brothers, at least from a, that in other countries, were Yemeni. I think about them, I make dua for them, and I love them. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because when I was there in Aden with them, they treated me with the, in the highest regard. And they didn't care about that other stuff. I was one of them. I never felt that amongst many of the other places I've traveled to where you're like really amongst them. Also in Indonesia, I had a good experience. And in other places. And having ta'awan with my brothers in Ethiopia and, and all over. And amongst the Somali community, I know so many around the world. But when you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the maqsa, that's, what is it, that, that's the intention, that's what the shara calls us to do. That's what the shara calls us to do. That's what Allah commands you to do. So you can't sit in a barrier and, 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 and have this uh, prejudice and have this these racial stereotypes. We've got to move beyond that. Yes, you're going to find negative. And as one of the brothers was mentioning about the various communities, I could make a book and compile about various different communities, what I've witnessed and what I know personally. But I would never say that to insult someone else and their sensitivities. And that's what we have to begin to understand because this is how we deal with one another. So we have to be careful when we're making da'wah especially if you're in a public forum, of what you say and how you address people. I can't go to a Somali community and then begin to blast the Somalis and begin to talk about their shortcomings within their, their tribalism. Because I'm an outsider for one, and people are sensitive to that. But you have to deal with them in a way to highlight problems and help everyone come up. A last point I want to make, a habitafillah, is when making da'wah, from the thick of Tao is knowing the people that you're addressing. And when you're on a public platform, that means you're addressing the world. So you have to be aware and conscious of how and what you say. And sensitive to other people's thing. Because you're a da'i. That means you're calling to a law. If we're in Jahiliyyah and we're just talking to anything, if I want to be a rap star, I want to be this, I want to be this, okay. Then you have a different principles you follow. But in Islam, because you're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's commanded you to be brothers, he's commanded, he isn't giving you any authority to say this race is less than this. The Prophet sallallahu said that in Hujjat al-Wada, you know, mention that, that uh, you know, the, the, the Muslims are brothers and the Arab and the non-Arab, neither in black and white, <laughs> not, not one is superior to the other. But we, we kind of forget that part of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or it's difficult because we are stained. We're all infected. But you have to begin to rehab. And one of the ways that you rehab, and especially in given da'wah, is knowing the people you're dealing with. And uh, a point 
Fer'in that I want to mention on that is that when you know the people, when you can look at the people and deal with them as they are, we see some du'at, some new graduates and others that are doing good work in America, that are dealing with the people on their level. And I'm sure in the UK, because I know enough Salafi du'at there as well, that some of them are on the ground doing positive work with the youth and dealing with them on their level. That's another last point you got to remember. Deal with people on their level. You can't attack somebody. He, he might come. In fact, I was back in America the last time. There was a new white brother. He just got out of the joint, meaning he just got out of prison. He was half his face was, was tatted up. Okay? If you don't know how to deal with it, this, this brother, now he's a brother, he came from that lifestyle. So you don't start just blasting him and blasting people who are tatted and this and this. But you have to deal with people on their level. You have to deal with them with their level of iman. This is how the Prophet ﷺ raised the Sahaba. What did he, he give them? What did they work on for Ashada Sinawat? Iman. Just learning Iman and Tawheed. At its stage, in stages. That was before the Ahkam began to be revealed. That was in Mecca. And so you have to have this thick of da'wah, is knowing people's level. And even for the non dai and that's why I'm saying this to all of us, that you've got to begin to empathize with your brothers from wherever they are. Oh, this is a white sister that comes from a, you know, a poor background, or she comes from a wealthy high society, she has different background, different education, different issues that she need, that needs to be understood, that people have to take that in consideration when dealing with her. Oh, this one is Chinese and, you know, came from such and such family. This one's African American, came from this family, high status, wealthy, this, or came straight off the street, whatever the case may be, it's learning, that's thick of learning how to deal with people at their different levels. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.